Welcome to Talk Purpose and Truth with Eden and Kim, shifting you into higher consciousness, the show that elevates, uplifts, and encourages listeners to grow, heal, awaken, and evolve. Eden and Kim include bold topics, special interviews with inspiring guests, intuitive readings, channeled messages from beyond, including celebrities, hot topics to expand your awareness, and time for questions from the audience. Tune in for unprecedented truth, authenticity, on purpose discussions, and magical moments. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talk Purpose and Truth podcast. I wanted to shout out to a lot of our listeners today, or listeners from up until now. We've heard from a lot of people that they've had people, parents have had a lot of their teen daughters and sons <laughs> listening to our show because they feel like the kids would be inspired by a lot of things, a lot of our topics. So we're just, we want to say welcome to those kids for who are listening and we really appreciate it. Yeah. Super awesome. Like mm-hmm. a, for example, I have a friend who, who listens with her teen daughter and it's been really helping her with like energy protection and, and, yeah. you know, pressure from friends and things. So that's really nice. Yeah. So our product of the week we've been featuring, um, we have a different one this week and it's from DorotheaEssences.com and Doris Muna, who's a gifted energy healer, medical intuitive author. She's a creator of Dorothea Healing Essences. It is a flower essence healing spray and this one is actually really interesting. It's called Harmony Spray and it helps eliminate relationship discords with parents, partners, family members, coworkers, friends, and even yourself self and it restores inner harmony so it works on the soul level and gently helps you with healing and moving forward and it's just it's magical how she knows how to create these products so um, there's specials on sets of four there's specials on her website so go to dorotheaessences.com d-o-r-o-t-h-e-a wow that sounds so great i need some right now it's right here. You can try it. <laughs> Thanks. So anyway, well, we're excited this week, actually, uh, on December 5th, this week, we get to go, Eden and I get to go see the revolution and yeah. they're at the, the famous Ace Hotel. So if any of you have ever been there, it's just this historic, like 120 year old, beautiful, gorgeous venue in LA. Um, and our friend invited us. Yeah, Vicky. Shout out to Vicky. Right, Bobby Vicky, Z's wife. Vicky, Vicky Rivkin, yes. Bobby Z's wife, the drummer of the revolution and the manager. And just want to say, you know, thank you to them for letting us have a couple tickets and letting me see the show for the first time. I've never seen Prince live or never gone to a concert. So this is going to be my, my first time. Yeah, and I actually, I, I saw Prince so many times, but I had never seen him with the revolution because I saw him when I was older and I did get to see the revolution at first Avenue in Minnesota right after he passed. And it was just, it was phenomenal. And being in there, I remember being at the the first Avenue, I felt like I was in purple rain, you know, and I of course felt Prince with me. Uh So it was just, it was magical. So I am excited because I know he'll, he'll be coming along too. Oh yeah. He'll be there. He'll be sitting next to us. Yeah. Well, he'll probably be on stage, actually. Right, exactly. <laughs> so uh, so we're excited. We have some special guests we'll announce in a couple minutes. Um, but I, I wanted to, it made me think of this earlier this week, um, because we do a lot with the Imperfectly Perfect campaign. And I remember I was, I was just coming home, and I was really tired. And that week I had had to get glammed up for a few things and my fake eyelashes and cute outfits and all mm. that. And I think sometimes to people, they think, oh, you're just always like that. And I remember climbing up the stairs after playing with my kids and doing all these things, feeling like a big hot mess Mm -hmm. and thinking, yeah, I am a mess. Who cares? Like I'm not perfect. I don't care. My car is a mess. I sometimes am a mess, you know, but I, I just made me start thinking like when people have that pressure or their own pressure to be perfect, it comes actually from fear. And uh-huh. it comes from fear of not being good enough, not being liked, accepted, um, not being what you're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. All these weird beliefs that we've picked up. Yeah. And so it's so freeing to be able to let that go because I don't care, you know? Yeah, but I think it took you a while to oh, get yeah. there. Oh, like for me. Sure. Same for sure. Same for me. I used to think I had to be perfect. Yeah, it took a lot of work. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, but there's no perfect here. No, (laughs) I don't think so. I don't think anyone can obtain that. So they'll just keep working for it, working at it to get there and they'll never get there. Right. And but a lot of it is, um, I think, to be able to be free, you have to be conscious. And that's what our guests are going to be talking about, about love and consciousness and and um, 
I got this vision. Eden and I both get visions quite often. Mm -hmm. And um, I got this a lot of times it's at night. And I got this vision of just it was almost like I was driving in a car and a white dove, which doves often go by my car. um, But a white dove flew by my car Mm -hmm. and I didn't notice it. And it they told me spirit told me that or could have been Prince glowing. um, But they told me that um, most everyday people wouldn't notice this beautiful dove because they're just in the monotony and roboticness of the traffic and life. Mm -hmm. And so I just felt it was a symbol. And it reminded me of a story that our guest is going to mention about a grocery store. It's a very similar message to that story. So so I want to introduce our guests. Um, So we have Kiko Ellsworth and Sarah Delane here. So Kiko, can you tell us a little about you? If I must. They're transformational uh, leaders, and, and, and they both have been actors as well. Yeah. I, On I my favorite show. If, if, if what, what show was that? General Hospital. Oh, dun, oh dun, 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 dun. <laughs> G-I-H. And Something I, I just have to say, I brought my mother-in-law today mm. because she loves that show, too. Oh, so. oh, Big yeah. deal to her. See, so you have audience members, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. let's, let's see, if I had to sum up, like, who I am, um, as as a as a spiritual being as a man i guess you know my one of my biggest accomplishments is like moving from a man that was uh not just to say very unconscious and egotistical and yeah womanizer and living in the dark life but being able to i guess really tap in and remember who i truly am and have spirit guide me to transforming my life right. and using the tools of entertainment and inspiration and talking and empowerment and, and um, self-defense and teaching and kids and that sort of thing to be able to create content to inspire those to step into their power and to um, to use their voice and to use the tools to spread their light in the world. So that would be my, that was my deal right beautifully there. said mm-hmm. i love mm-hmm. it yeah and i and i've been blessed to know you quite long enough to see oh a gosh. gigantic yeah. transformation well me to you too right i mean yeah right. We've I, grown. I, knew, I knew from the very beginning and that at that right when you started this stuff man yeah that's a beautiful thing so sarah can you tell yeah. us a little more about you hi yeah thanks i'm really excited to be here thanks for having me Thank um you. so my name is sarah delane yes i've spent time as an actress <laughs> kiko and i were on sister shows for the mm-hmm. longest time um and now i am the conscious lifestylist and I'm grateful that I get to spend my days working with clients all over the world, helping them write a new love story, which uh, combines, or I should say integrates, subconscious reprogramming, emotional mastery, and spiritual awakening. That's my sister right there. That's my Mm. sister right there. I love her so much. That's my (laughs) sister. I love it right up my alley. (laughs) Right? I know. It matches our show exactly. Mm -hmm. I love that. Our our tagline is shifting Mm -hmm. you into higher consciousness. Yes. 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 So there you go. I brought her for a reason. So, Kiko, tell us. I I gave a teaser of the grocery store story. Oh, okay. We're going to go straight into that. Cool. Well, you know. I haven't heard this one. I was a bad one. This one, one, like, blew my mind. You know, like, we all saw the movie The Matrix. And the, um, the movie, the, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, I have to. I did not see it. I've only seen no. pieces no, of it. it. I know, but I Girl, do. That's love like Keanu. sacrilegious right now yeah, for I the circle. Okay, I have seen our Star assignment. Wars. I haven't seen that Matrix. Whatever that's called. You guys need to make that a binge watching night. night right? yeah. Well, we love yeah. Keanu, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this was this is in the con the conversation of us getting up and doing something if you see something wrong in the world like standing up and like doing something like back in the day we used to you know just go f- do something and you would like you know if, a, if someone's neighbor saw you out in the street or something like that she'd be like boy you better stop messing get get back in your house right you know what i'm saying there was a sort of adventure and activism a, 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 an ability f- uh, naturalness for us to like stand up and, and just naturally do something as a community so this story was sort of the opposite of that. So I'm rolling up to Ross, right? I'm rolling up to Ross, and I go to my groceries. I get my little, you know, recyclable bag. I got my bag and everything. And I see some like a, gro- a crowd of people at the door. So I'm like, oh man, something's, something's going down. Like if somebody like somebody have a heart attack or something, what, what, what happened here, right? So and I park, you know, I'm getting my bag and everything. I, I creep up and I'm like, okay, something's going down. And so there's like 15, 20 people at the at the door. So I kind of creep up and I'm like, all right. So I kind of whisper to the person. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then he looks at me and he says, this is, you know, brace yourself. So he says, the door won't open. 
<laughs> no, no, no. This, this is the trip. This is some deep stuff. Like very stuff. seriously. This is, this is deep. The tears at the door. Door won't open. Now, man, there's 15, 20 people here. And so this is when I'm like, you know, in the Matrix where you kind of have that sort of glass or that wall that you can kind of step through and enter into another dimension. Right. I did that. I did that at Rouse. I did that right there. So I, I, I looked at this dude and I was like, oh, okay. I did that on the inside. And then I said, I look back at the door and I step forward. And then I put my fingers in between the door and I pulled them open. <laughs> now, here's the, here was the scary part. Here was, wow. a, here was the scary part. Everyone was frozen. Like, literally, I felt like I was in a time zone. They were frozen. They couldn't act. They like, were, when, like when Keanu's like stopping, like the bullets are, but he's like slowing down the bullets, like good, that moment. Yeah, it wasn't bullets, but yeah, it was frozen it was like the that. Door. Yeah, it was the door. It was the door. <laughs> it was the exactly. Door. <laughs> so, but as soon as I opened up the door, people came back to life oh my and they God. started they but they were frozen oh, you know people yeah. just because it wasn't not, automatic because it wasn't automatic yeah. it wasn't done for do. them they didn't know what to do yeah. like a, an actual moment oh. in life they didn't know what to do oh. you know it's i feel tragic. like that's like a far side comic do you guys know far side comics? yeah yeah, yeah. Oh I don't God. know. Maybe the younger audience, yeah. <laughs> you know, they may not, but check out Farsight. Like, I feel like that would be such a great image of like Farsight. Like everybody just standing at the door, not knowing what to do. Yeah, yeah. Because like the automatic door isn't doing what it's so, supposed to do. Right? Yeah, exactly. So, so that that was like I, I got a glimpse, a microcosm of the world that we're in, and how mm. sort of we've been conditioned to not act and to not take that sort of action, like in the moment, like in the world, what which plays a bigger conversation with this world not being a, 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 a safe space for right. our brother and for our sisters actually right. out and there. Right, and you were yeah. saying about how it actually is the right vibration for cri- for crime or criminals. Yeah, yeah, you got you can't you can't miss and ignore the results that are happening. Mm-hmm. Cuz right now, you know, I, I when I was a kid, I was I was a criminal myself, you know what I'm saying? I you you and you and if you're a criminal, you're sensitive to the vibes growing up, mm-hmm. you know? And People are doing things in broad daylight, whether they're kidnapping children and girls and sex trafficking, sex trafficking breaking mm-hmm. in cars. They're, they're bold mm-hmm. right yeah. now. And mm-hmm. criminals know when the coast is clear mm-hmm. and they know when it's not. Mm-hmm. And things are happening right now because the coast is clear, because exactly what happened right there at Rouse, because they know the vibe out there that we're putting out there is that we're not going to really do something we're gonna we're gonna start a campaign. Mm-hmm. We're gonna get a petition. We're gonna do that stuff. We're gonna mm-hmm. share something on, but we're not actually gonna grab something like we did back in the day and like you know, and, and do something about right. it like in that moment physically. Take and action. speaking of unconsciousness too, people will walk around like they'll leave the store, walking to their car, looking at their phone the whole time. Yeah, almost so, getting hit mm, by cars. Mm. <laughs> well, that or grabbed. Yeah kidnapped or robbed well, yeah that's unconscious yeah. too and that's why yeah. captain kiko is here. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. well, i wouldn't say that i'm a from, part of, I'm from a part of criminal hey, to hey, I'm captain a kiko of you I'm actually a, ralph owes you money because those people would have left and they would have lost I know, like, right, thousands right. of dollars yeah yeah nice 12 spin. people <laughs> do you have do you have your uh what is it a costume your your no, superhero man. look man it's just it's just, called, it's, it's just called awareness man oh, I, I that's it it's just awareness that intuitive <laughs> side you know what i'm saying and then being able i think that's like the balance between the the, the feminine and masculine being aware of something at, at a sensitive level and then knowing how to switch into that yang energy and like mm-hmm. do something about it and not right. letting that energy block and stop mm-hmm. but how do yep, we you know sarah you do a lot of consciousness work as well what do we do about the people that don't have any desire to become conscious like it's easier just to stay the same what do we well, they do? don't know that they yeah. don't know though That's, right i love that statement. Right. yeah but it how is. do we make the shift then how does the world shift hmm. so it, as human behavior, the the sad part, right, is we're not really proactive to this. We're not really proactive when it comes to our health. You know, we wait until we get sick to go to the doctors. You wait until something like happens in your relationship to like go get a coach or you know what I mean? Like our mindset is not around being proactive towards that. So mm-hmm. unfortunately, and I'm in all transparency, I was not exempt in this, you know. Mm-hmm. So I had to wait until I hit rock bottom until it was so painful. Yeah. Right. This is like the human condition. We wait until something is so painful or we feel like we can't turn until another direction or we we can't go the direction that we were going and now we're forced in mm. this like healing state or something like that or we hurt mm. so bad that now we have a reason to you know transform so to speak it's yeah. like but then when they're rock bottom mm-hmm. there's not a lot of options out there so there's not you're right there no. wasn't a lot when i had my awakening and mm-hmm. i mean i but you 
Now we actually can say we have more transformational coaches. You have mm -hmm. more YouTube videos. When I was awakening, there wasn't like YouTube was just coming into like, I think we had like the Galactic Federation of Light doing some yeah. recording yeah. of something, you know, and I was like, what is that? Who like, just give me tangible. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? I can go astro projecting all day long, but I need to know how to shift out of how I feel right now. And I need something tangible. And, and what is that? And what does that look like? Yeah. So, but the unfortunate thing I think is that people will say you know the ones who need to be able to afford help mm -hmm. so they'll just go with whatever their insurance sends them or wherever they send them so they you don't really be, get the best they don't get the alternative healing you would be surprised okay when you are in enough pain it is a great motivator unfortunately mm -hmm. we are negatively motivated as a culture yeah. and a society right so when if you're in enough pain, if somebody has a solution for you, not a band aid, mm -hmm. like an actual yeah. solution, yeah, right. to heal from the core, exactly to mm -hmm. heal, exactly. I love that heal from the core, mm -hmm. right? Which means like going to the subconscious, going to like where the source of you know behavior, where the source of I call them programs, right? Mm -hmm. Where these subconscious behavioral programs came from, how you can step into being the conscious creator of your reality, mm -hmm. where before you're running old, I call it a false identity, right? We have learned behavior. We have learned identity that comes from society, comes from, you know, in all honesty, what our parents teach us based on what they know, right? Right. And it, to me, it's about stepping into your sovereignty and discovering for yourself who you are in the alignment with, you know, higher consciousness, whatever, yeah, you right. know, but there is that pivotal point where it's between, um, whenever you're in a traumatic situation, right? To the yeah. varying degree that anyone is in trauma um, and in relationships, I kind of call it like you have the PTSD of trauma, right? Mm -hmm. Post-traumatic stress, mm -hmm. right? You can have relationship PTSD. I feel like mm -hmm. that's where everybody is right now. Mm -hmm. But you have this like fork in the road where you get to choose. Are you going to go down the continued um, victimized state right? Of PTSD, right? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to switch into PTG, which is post-traumatic growth? Mm. And Ooh, you, good one. I like that. <laughs> yes. And every person, no matter where you are or what you're dealing with, has that opportunity and has that choice. Choice. Right. Yeah. Percent of choice. Right. Yep. And, I, and I think sometimes it does we need to hit bottom sometimes and that's what I, that's what mm -hmm. I see so many people shift from hitting bottom yep. because they're and not I, being enabled and, anymore and I yeah. remember too it's funny because I remember being in my 20s and I had a really bad period where I hit bottom mm -hmm. and there weren't really any social media or videos yet no. or not yeah. even cell phones yet, or maybe just started with cell phones so I read 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 I just realized how bad I was finally and like read every book I can get my hands on yeah. To, yeah. to climb out of it you know it's kind of the typical like where yeah. there's a will there's a way right. like if you want answers oh you will find it right definitely and, and actually it's kind of also the principle of like what you seek is also seeking you so when you step into the vibration of searching for something like that like you will be presented with that to, exactly yeah. mm -hmm. like That's it'll true. be there for you that. the same way that if you're going into toxic behavior it will be there for you more and more <laughs> oh yeah it'll you know? mirror back it'll reflect it'll back, mirror back at you yes yeah. definitely which how is did, the vibration yeah how did you go from acting to where you are now Great question. So um, I started really young. I started at 13. Um, and uh, at that time, you know, in order to do that, I was I was so grateful. I got to live with my grandmother in order to do that. But that relationship turned very toxic. So I didn't realize at the time, you know, so looking back in hindsight, that was kind of the how I got subconsciously programmed with learning what love was, what I thought was supposed to look like. Right. Which yeah. is abusive behavior and, and verbal, right. Mm -hmm. Verbally toxic. And so coming out of that, I was completely shut down. And my, my only outlet, um, <laughs> at the time I didn't, I didn't know what astral projecting was. I didn't know what meditation was. I didn't know any of that. But when I was living with her, my only escape was to sort of go inside my mind, listen to the multiple voices mm. <laughs> in there. Um, and my escape was through characters and through acting. Yeah, I nice. could emote and express myself through any other character because then I got to avoid me, the authentic me, the real me, which yeah. there was so much pain to be the real me. Mm -hmm. And so that, of course, took, you know, continued down that journey in order to suppress my authentic self and run away from my authentic self, shut down my connection with my heart and my true being, you know. Um, and so I got really heavy into, I mean, it's Hollywood, right? I got heavy into drugs and alcohol and I'm really open about that now. Mm -hmm. um, but at the time, I didn't, I didn't have a reference for it, right? I just knew I was completely depersonalized. I didn't feel anything. I felt completely just disconnected mm -hmm. from anything and everything. 
And I guess then drugs and alcohol was another outlet yeah. until when, you know, it's like trying to keep escaping from yourself and not feeling comfortable in your body and, and being here on this planet. And, um, one night too many drugs almost led me to really leave wow. <laughs> the wow. body and the mm-hmm. everything. But that was probably one of the most pivotal um, points in my life where that was a full kundalini awakening. That was a full, like wow. all of a sudden I was now hearing things and seeing things mm-hmm. and waking up in the middle of the night. And there were these energies in my room and, and my alarm clock was going off and it was waking me up at three thirty three in the morning. And I mm-hmm. like, yeah. like I was getting visions and I had knowings and I couldn't put them like they were all happening at once. Mm-hmm. And so literally my energy field, I couldn't be in public places Mm -hmm. I would feel like I stuck my finger in a light socket (laughs) right yes Uh and it was really me picking up all of the energy around I could hear people's voices I could hear their emotions I could feel their emotions I didn't even know what empath meant Uh like I had none of it like right like it it sounds like I'm Bruce Almighty with Jim Carrey when he becomes God (laughs) (laughs) right right he's like like, yes it's too much I don't know what to do I don't know what to do yeah so I realized I had to take a break and also at the same time that was my moment of okay am I gonna go down this way of of like not choosing myself or am I going to choose me and choose mm-hmm. my own growth and choose my own healing? And so I started every transformational. I started seeking um, coaches. I started seeking mentors, going to my first transformational seminar. Yes. YouTube videos, the little bit that was there, yeah. <laughs> any books, anything like that. And then eventually I was like, you know, I need to I need to put Hollywood on hold right now because I can't I can't hear all these different things that are happening right now. And it was really a scary time. And so I was like, well, if if I'm ever going to do it, it's going to be now. And it was this weird calling in my heart that was like, go Mm -hmm. be like, go align, (laughs) go reconnect really Mm -hmm. to like the true me. So. You know, spirit works really fast at that point. I packed mm-hmm. everything up in about 30 days. I had this cute little Z3 coupe and it was like just shoved everything in it, sold half of the rest of my stuff. And I moved to Sedona for three years. Wow. So you made so, space. I made space. Um, I I went to a place where I could just look within and then compartmentalize. Like, okay, what is clairsentient? What is clairaudient? Like mm-hmm. you, you have to go and be willing to like look at yourself. I had to fight my own inner demons. Uh-huh. Right. All the ones that I was suppressing, all the ones that I was accumulating yep. by all the drugs and alcohol, like all of that stuff. Right. Like it's real. Shedding the it's layers. a thing. Mm-hmm. And Sedona's like a it's like a fun house of mirrors. <laughs> you know, it's like you go and then when you want to turn away from yourself, you go the opposite direction, you have another mirror. Wow. So spending that time and really just understanding and realigning with with the higher version of um, what I feel like we all are outside of the physical body, mm-hmm. you know, and reconnecting with that. Mm-hmm. And so now I kind of put all those things together. I put the emotional mastery of learning, you know, f- as being an actress, the studying psychology and really understanding the core of our subconscious mm-hmm. and then spiritual alignment. And that's where, you know, I feel like you know, everything happens for a reason and spirits mm-hmm. like, okay, it brought you to where you it are brought today. me. Exactly. You know, and even in Sedona, I was teaching channeling out there at the acting oh. school and they're like, Oh, you're out here. Like, can you come teach the acting class? And wow. I was like, what? <laughs> and everybody out there wants to know about spirits and all that right. stuff. And I realize actors are natural channels, oh. but most acting coaches teach you how to bring in different energies or mm-hmm. entities, if you will. But not a lot of acting coaches are really teaching you how to release it uh-huh. out in a really nice, and healthy way that's so you know what that's you just gave me a flashback mm. so <laughs> else my acting teacher because I did acting back in the day and my yeah. um Al Scaglioni when I was 19 and he he is on Facebook so you can find him but um he's been in a lot of movies including like the Godfather 2 and but he was on the series Vegas oh he's, yeah you know um, yeah I remember that show that was a yeah fun yeah show. but he it was interesting because he I think he got me to where I am part of where I am today because in acting class Mm -hmm. he would make us get anger out Mm -hmm. and I didn't know how at that time and he would have us do these like powerful crazy meditations that was so new this was like 93 yeah so I'm like thinking this is trippy he was so (laughs) beyond like what people were doing at the time Mm -hmm. and and it helped me in my life because I had I had never learned how to get angry like it it taught me how to get it out Uh yeah but like with it but that's like so rare so I feel like that's that's what people need is like you know you need to be introduced to that stuff 
most people just aren't. Yeah. Well, we and again, just like you're saying, like it got you to connect with like that angry part of you where I feel like sometimes we make emotions bad and wrong and they're scary. Mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. ones that we don't like and we're like, no, 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 we can't feel that. Like push that down and shove that away. Right. And I'm like, but when you shove away a part of you that you're deeming or you're villainizing, then you also stop your ability to have the highest high emotions mm-hmm. of like love True. and happiness and all that stuff. And so we need to shift our awareness on like, it's okay to feel, even if it's sticky, even if it's angry, like fully embrace mm-hmm. it. As an actor, we're taught Man, that. Like of, you gotta, acting, acting you gotta go there. The best therapy right uh, there. Right? Well, you I mean, never know. Kiko can play <laughs> the best villain. I, he I, could. You yeah, so he has. Yeah, has. Yeah, yeah, has though. Right. So. You know, we're like, an, we're like an equalizer, you know, the, the human body or the emotion of the spirit. We're like an equalizer yeah. and we have all these different emotions and I feel like they, they all need to be acknowledged and yeah. got in touch with and we need to know where they're at because you can in life you you don't know when you're going to need certain emotions and that's one of the best uh, I think skills that I learned as an actor is that learning different parts of myself yeah. to express that anger to express that pain or those tears that regret and just how to navigate my inner world mm-hmm. love it love yeah. it yeah so if you're like, you know, you don't have to be an actor to like want to do acting classes. If you just go go do some acting classes. Right. Oh, do some of that. That's, that's some like mm-hmm. yeah. quick therapy right there. Yeah. Yeah. You right. see yourself real fast. Yeah. That's awesome. So do you miss playing a villain now? <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I, I don't miss it. It was a lot of fun, but now I'm on a different trajectory and, you know, we're creating more uh, conscious content that, that really creates a, a, a world, because uh, a movie is a world, a TV series is a world, so we're actually producing and creating you know, worlds of our own, and if the, if the uh, world calls for a character that gets to actually express that sort of those negative energies, but within a larger larger context of growth, mm-hmm. you know, then then yeah, of course I'll do right. it. I mean, because I love doing those things, but I just can't do it myself in, in a way that doesn't have any value. Because look, here's the thing. <clears throat> When I die, we're all going to die. We're all going to, you know, get out of these bodies. Like, it's just, you know, it's, it's nothing. I, I don't, it, we're going to die. You know what I'm saying? So when I look, I, I imagine when I look back in my life, like, I'm not going to care about just what movie I was in. I'm not going to mm-hmm. care about what, and I usually curse at this particular point, but I'm going to Because I don't give Either up. Way, you know you what I'm saying? It. But like, it's the thing. I don't, I don't. Let it out. I'm not That's gonna, the anger. I know, right? <laughs> exactly. You watch your ears. I don't, I'm not going to care about those movies and those TV shows if they didn't provide some sort of value to actually transforming our brothers and sisters out there. Mm-hmm. I won't care about that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be like, okay, if I did do something, how many lives did it transform? Mm-hmm. Did it did it really make a difference? Because I imagine I'll be able to look back over my life and really know the truth of what I did. Right. So that's a shift that I've made from doing that. So if it makes a difference, then heck yeah, of course, I'll be all in that character mm-hmm. doing what I got to do. Well, like mm-hmm. the shift, like Wayne Dyer's shift, like in that movie, you know, have you seen that? I don't know, I haven't seen Dr. that. Dr. Wayne Dyer, the shift, they do like acting, like Portia de Rossi's in it. There's mm-hmm. acting, but it in, it really like increases awareness and like helps people heal. The movie yeah. does. So then yeah. it's used for the good. Yeah, you know? exactly. Exactly. Yeah. In all honesty, we're all kind of the actors and the directors and the writers of our own. You know, we're all living out a story, but it's like, what story do you really want to create for yourself? Right. And what story do you want to be able to write? Are you living out a story that somebody else or society has written for you? You know, but we're all the we're all the actors of our own story and script so to speak yeah I know I played a role most of my childhood mm-hmm. yeah I like just, such I, as I was just the one in the family that was the strongest mm. well not to put anyone down but I just <laughs> took it all on not because I was better than anyone right but yeah I think I think um I, I liked to be that because then mm-hmm. people needed me and they thought the I was yeah they thought mm-hmm. yeah they thought like I was smart now. and that I c- could handle more things than the others so when I used to have people like friends call me for advice, mm-hmm. I didn't know what I was doing, but it was it was a role. Mm. Yeah, I was scared of her. And we, we went to high school together and I used to think she was like an unapproachable. I was like, oh, she's like this tough girl. So funny. I but, know. Yeah, but you were a tough girl. But, you made yourself I was. a tough girl to like handle like right. all of that. Was I gotta, my, I yeah, say, that was my role. Know, the, 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 I've had a lot of tough women in my life and tough, not necessarily on the outside, but tough on the inside. And they've just like protected me mm. like my entire life. Like I want to give it up like really to <laughs> you women, no matter how 
you know, it, 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 how you've worked, if it was a mask or not, or a role or whatever, you know, it's, it's, I think it's very important for us as men to acknowledge the toughness in women, you know, the, and the first thing really is the, the toughness and the magic of being able to actually bring a life force into this planet. Right. I mean, that is nothing short of the best type of universal magic that there is. And it's been minimized to just oh, having a baby. It's like, no, you've taken a force <laughs> from another from from another dimension. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you you're turned actually, energy, and you, into, you turn matter. energy <laughs> into matter within you and sourcing that sort of thing. So, mm-hmm. you know, to all to all of our our. Our, our sisters out there like that mm-hmm. our hat is off to you yeah. and thank you for birthing billions of people on this planet and ever since our existence and there is just an unquantifiable strength that women have females females all to females have mm-hmm. that men don't have mm-hmm. like i need well, to you guys are a part that. you're you're a part of it we're well well here's the there's thing a, here, here, there's here, a solid part of that where <laughs> where is but but you guys have been actually um you're endowed with a mm-hmm. strength that we do not have mm-hmm. like you have like you know the creator made the female in a way to whereas if you make the female weak the human race won't survive mm-hmm. you have to endow yeah. the, 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 the 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 one that's birthing the right. life right. Mm-hmm. with a strength with the greatest strength of all to protect that right mm-hmm. so um so well, thank and i you. love that you you do that on your platform is that you reach out to men about looking at women that way more and you do mm-hmm. a lot of work for women absolutely i mean i go back and forth like i, I kind of like dip back and forth like like my sister sarah here you know what i'm saying like all of you here but i'll use her as an example like she's my sister you right. know mm-hmm. she's my sister and i i want beautiful and great things for her in her life and so you know we, yeah we we actually work on um you know the man side when we, when we work on the man side we work on us actually seeing mm-hmm you know, beyond a woman's physical and seeing her divinity before her humanity. Right, or we work that. on seeing her energy before the material side of her. Mm-hmm. And the energetic side of who she is or her divinity first is that she's my divine sister. Mm-hmm. She's my sister first. So that's what I relate to first for her. Right. And that's and that's what takes precedence. And so I get to see all the beauty and all the many different facets that, that she is. And you know, the thing that I want to actually do with a lot of all my sisters is to have, you know, for us to do our job as the masculine to to protect, to create a world that's mm-hmm. safer for our sisters and our, our children as well, too, because y'all do do a great bang up job. And, and no one's perfect. You know what I'm saying? But like women are doing their job of protection. You know, it's and I, I feel like I, I feel like we as your brothers are not standing up and doing a job to whereas you don't have to look over your shoulder 300 to 3,000 times per day, mm, right. which is the stats out there. Right, I know. Mm-hmm. You so. talk about that on the Yang Out on your show. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, We that's that's our that's the, the, the men's show where we engage in this just basically high vibrational conversation for men mm-hmm. and how to actually transform ourselves. And, you know, the thing is, is that what I've, what I've noticed, and I, I don't prompt this with the guys, but when I when we do these interviews, the thing when they have their breakthroughs, the thing – that they actually come to terms with a lot is the f- when they stop and embrace the feminine side within themselves, mm-hmm. that yin, mm-hmm. and they, they learn how to balance it with the yang, mm-hmm. that's when they say, you know what, I've never had a better more, and it creates peace within themselves. And once they have peace within themselves with that yin yang energy, th- the female relationship is a given. It starts working mm-hmm. out like black like right. women think that yeah, is I so sexy. That, uh-huh. We're like that is so sexy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I've seen it in my own marriage. Like I've seen the shift. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The less the e, the more he sheds his ego, the more I'm attracted. And like, yeah. oh my god, your words are turning me <laughs> on, right? <laughs> and so he's like, okay, I'll work on it more. And yeah. Edwin won't mind, you know, Edwin. <laughs> oh, that's my bro. That's my bro right there, man. Acknowledge yeah. him Powerful for that. He does, does right? it. he does it more. Yeah. Right. But yeah, how do you how do you help a man like on your show or or when you meet with someone or whatever you know living by example how do you help them realize they're even in ego like ego love versus conscious love or or ego living versus like getting more conscious so you can see the divinity before humanity you know it's 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 multiple ways you know um the, the what we do through our show is we engage in this sort of conversation and because i can't you know break all men through you know mm-hmm. you know but if a man sees different examples if he sees different role models he's, he sees different uh, different types yeah. of men that are having these sorts of awakening that are talking generally about the same thing he's going to see himself in that 
You know what I'm saying? So where, whether it's going to inspire him to look deep within himself, whether he's going to get a tool and have an experience that takes him out of his usual self. You know, typically speaking, a man, uh, anybody, but a man needs to have some sort of experience where he experiences something other than where he's at. Mm-hmm. And, and it's and it's usually it's something that's like, wow, that was that was pretty cool. That was inspiring or I'd never felt that way. It was a little new, but I, I like that. You know, so if he has an experience of something else, mm. you know, other that takes him out of his head, that moves him into his heart, that moves him into his body, he has an experience where he experiences a different um, version of himself, a more yeah. expanded version of himself, mm-hmm. then he actually gets to do that. So, you know, um, you know, a man that 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 doesn't have access to his his softer side is like is like a car only operating a 12 cylinder car only operating mm-hmm. in six cylinders. Mm-hmm. He's only operating Good his yang point. energy. He, like if that. he wants to be a full and complete man, he's got to acknowledge mm-hmm. all of his all of his. Right. Self, and that's a good sides. one for, for guys is to use a car. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. true. And yeah. if he wants if you to get know about a if you want up. and if he wants a Ferrari, you can't learn to drive a Honda. Then you can't That's drive a Ferrari like Corbett. a Honda. Yeah, no, exactly. Corbett. Yeah, you gotta step up. Yeah, <laughs> what you were describing, you have to be, or he has to be, out of ego to have that experience. I think. Can I touch on that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I, do you, I, well, you were going to say I, something. Well, I, I'll say something. You can say something. Okay. Not necessarily. I mean, I think that maybe the final result is that he is taken out of ego. He doesn't have to take himself out of ego to have that experience. But I think ultimately, in most cases, he gets an experience where he's out of him, out, out of out of his ego because he can go into an experience fully in his ego, and then someone can it can either be an accident or he can see something uh-huh. and he's like, oh shit, that and that and that felt mm-hmm. and that completely took him out of his ego, and then he's like, well, I you know, ooh, what that's happened? A little weird. What happened? What, what was that all about? But then he gets introduced to himself. Oh, but um, what, what were you gonna say? That, I know you got powerful. something on this too, my sister. <laughs> okay, I was just gonna say because I I it's, it's such a large conversation about the mm-hmm. ego, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And even like we hear so many people even saying like, you know, cut the ego or kill the ego or whatever. I'm sure you probably all heard that. whole. Yeah. And it just it it frustrates me a little bit. It triggers me a little bit because as I see the ego um, from a psyche standpoint, right, your ego is um, I mean, see if this resonates for you. Right. Your ego is related, if not your actual inner child. Mm-hmm. And so if we're saying, OK, you know, it's it's not a connecting with the ego. It's not a getting rid of the ego. It's not stepping outside of the ego. To me, it's actually an integration of the ego, which is you integrating the inner child that for most of us, we kind of self-abandoned ourselves yeah. when something happened a long time ago. And if we didn't feel mm-hmm. safe. Right. And that sort of inner child of us had to had to either grow up too quickly or sort of take a back seat. And our inner protector stepped in. Yes. Right. And so then that inner child is still in there as the inner child, not having anybody give attention to it. And so just like a child, if it doesn't get attention, maybe it starts getting rambunctious or starts like throwing tantrums or whatever. Right. And that's where then you have the unhealthy ego expressing itself. And Mm -hmm. that can continue rippling out into whatever behavior Mm -hmm. that can look like. Or health problems sometimes. Or health problems, whatever, mental, physical, Mm -hmm. all of the above. Great. I mean, makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. That's what I did when I. Yeah. I was always looking for conflict. Mm hmm. Yeah. OK. Yeah. So it was like to release it like a lot of the way. Like, it, like yeah. Somehow, I mean, mine, I acted out in anger. Right. Yeah. And I wanted I want someone to fight with. Mm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but that's fun. what you maybe associated love to look like. Mm-hmm. So to you, it wasn't like like that's what love was supposed to be to yeah. you. Yeah. Based on however, whatever experiences showed you that when when you were younger. OK. But yeah, integrating. Yeah. I think I everything's an integration. Everything. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, I think this all motivated everyone to get out of ego, but but to, <laughs> to integrate with their ego. Yes. Yeah. In a different way, right? You're just shifting yeah. it. Yeah, that's a different way to look at it, definitely. To, to flow with everything else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it's about like owning and loving all parts of yourself. Exactly. Yeah. If, if everything is about relationships and we have relationships with everything, then we need to redefine our relationship with ourself before we go even, like that's going to set the tone for how we interact in our other relationships. Right, right. And I know like Kiko and I were talking on the phone a while back and we were talking about how you know we're all human so those thoughts will come up the ego will come up the thoughts will come up the the dysfunctional stuff comes up once in a while but 
the more you work on yourself, the more aware yeah. you are. So yeah. you're like, sometimes you can be going, oh, well, thank you. That just reminded me of who I am now. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's, it's like, oh, I'm going to pat myself on the back because I've done the work. Yeah. So it's not going to last as long or I'm going to be able to look at it different or, or just ignore clean it. it up. Yeah. Right. Just clean it up. Yeah. Right. It just happens faster and faster yeah. when you learn how to clean it up. And, and yeah. then the more you do the inner work or the self-study, the more tools you have at your disposal mm-hmm. to, to use at any given point in time to help you make that transition faster. Yeah. I mean, that's and the point. The more me, that we, yeah, and the more that we do that, you know, that's the as a below or as above, so below. The more that we um, understand ourselves and integrate with ourselves and and dive in deeper, the further we get to these, you know, desired states of consciousness or mm-hmm. energy or higher awakening, enlightenment, call it whatever you want. Mm-hmm. You know, if that's the ultimate goal for people, <laughs> that's why the that. work is worth it. Yes, I the ones it. listening here should. I I feel like that's what would resonate with. <laughs> oh, it's, it's what our audience is all about. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah, for sure. So, well, this has been just powerful and enlightening. And I always mm-hmm. learn a lot from you, Kiko. And now Ditto. you too, Sarah. Thank you. Um, and so you guys are all so aligned with, with all what our show is about. Mm-hmm. Um, so can you tell us, each tell us a little bit more about what you have going on and where to find you? Should you go first? Go ahead. Sure. Is- um, so Instagram's my favorite place right now. So um, you can find me at my handle is Sarah, uh, spelled with an E, S-E-R-A-H-D-L-A-I-N-E. Um, and if anybody wants to, you can go to the link in my bio right there and download my seven steps to writing a new love story. It's a nice. free download. And I went to your website. It's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So. Don't freak out, fellas, when you see how beautiful she is. My sister is. <laughs> All of my sisters. Thank yeah. you. Um, yeah. And right now we're actually independently producing our men. TV show called The Yang Out. Nice. You know, hang out, yeah. yang out, yang out. And uh, so we're independently producing that. And you can go to theyangout.com. And if you want to support it, we're doing microfinancing and we're, you know, we're, we're producing it ourselves. But we want to do it the way that we want to do it in a way that causes transform- transformation right. and raises consciousness and uh, uh, engages us, our brothers, in that conversation inside of ourselves so we can become whole and complete men and happy and healthy, right. you know, and radiant men. Well, and we can watch it to learn more about men, so. It's, it's <laughs> a show, it's a show, it's a show mm. targeted towards men in our development, but it's ultimately the goal is how we interact together. Yeah. Like I, I have so many great women in my life that are just my sisters, that are just platonic friends like Sarah, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's like, because I work on that stuff, it's like, I have a beautiful relationship with her and with women. Ultimately, it's right. it's so we can have a balanced relationship together. So that's yeah. the, that's the end goal. Yeah, I love it, especially because you have a daughter too. A yes. little, oh, beautiful my little daughter. princess warrior. Yep. Right. So well, thank you all. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Thanks for you guys for being here. Yeah. For more information on Eden, go to EdenSuston.com. For more information on Kim, go to KimLifeCoach.com. Make sure to follow them on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Talk Purpose and Truth Podcast. If you loved this episode, you'll love every episode. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Thank you for listening.